Don't bark. Don't. You're about to bark. Don't bark. I don't think you really know how fast I am. And you want to see? You want to see how fast I am? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Uh, today is Thursday morning when I am filming this. Wow, and my voice just cracked like I was 14 years old. Cool. We got that ball of fire coming up in the eastern sky over there. And we're about to go do some more training today. So just like yesterday, we're gonna be training on the uh, knuckle boom truck, loading and unloading poles. Uh, we can also load and unload uh, like crates and stuff. It works as a crane as well. To, um, it's pretty neat. And then after that, we're gonna train a little bit on the RGN trailer, the low bed trailer. I call it the low bed, but it's the RGN. Uh, that'll be pretty neat to show you how that all works. And then after that, I'm not sure. It, it sounded like we were just going to be training in the morning today, but it might be an all day thing. Not sure. Not sure. But Friday, I might be going out with another guy uh, for some hands on training. Right now I need to get some coffee into my blood because because it's necessary, because it's the morning time, it's a new day and a new day deserves a fresh cup of coffee. Hmm. We're looking for Chevy. Dun -dun 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 oh, I got him, I got him, I got him. Hey Chevy, you wanna say hi to everybody? No, you're busy, you gotta find a good spot. He's got a load to deliver. He's going to his spot, I can tell. <laughs> That's good, that's why we're out here. So good morning everybody, good morning. It's another day, it's Thursday when I'm filming this and today is another day of training for me. I've got to uh, finish up my training on the knuckle boom truck. We're gonna pick more stuff up and put it back down. We're gonna unload poles. And then they wanna train me on the RGN trailer, which is what I call the uh, the low bed trailer. It's for like hauling heavy equipment and stuff like that. And it sounded like that was only gonna take us half the day. But maybe he meant we were gonna work on the knuckle boom for half the day and then RGN for half the day. I don't think it'll take half a day for the RGN. To train on that low bed, it, uh, it only takes like an hour. I th I'm pretty sure that's what he told me. So it might just be a half day of training. Guess I'll just have to show up and find out. Chevy, are you done? Chevy? Chevy? It's a beautiful morning out here. I love summer mornings. I lost my dog. He disappeared. It's gotta be here somewhere. There he is. You're gonna need that shovel, Dad. I'm sorry. Well, it's official. 
They've signed off on me. I am now fully trained on unit 3106 in the yard. Just for that unit and just for that crane. Not for all cranes and not for all boom trucks. That truck. And also the RGN. I'm hooked up to it right now, actually. You see it back there? We just finished our training on that, so I'm gonna go, uh, it's noon, it's lunchtime, I'm getting hungry. I'm gonna go and uh, drop this wagon in the back where it belongs. And I'll take you guys along with me for that. See, if, uh, you guys can see me do it on my own with no supervision for the very first time. I am hungry. I usually have some snacks in the morning time on a regular day. <laughs> Come with me, RGN. Let's bring you home. So with this trailer, we would haul, you know, uh, moderately heavy equipment, not the heavy, heavy equipment, but you know, heavy equipment, trucks, broken down trucks, uh, pretty much light to medium heavy duty equipment. I'm sure they will put me to work on it in the future. There it is. It's pretty tough. Those uh, securement points on this trailer are rated at 11,000 pounds. So it's meant for business. Oh, hey, somebody parked a different trailer in my spot already. It was supposed to go right here. There's somebody else parked in my spot. Oh, you leave the spot open for five minutes and somebody fills it up. Oh, well, I'll find another spot for it, I guess. It was parked right here. I'll put it in there beside that trailer. too far and hit that fence back there. Let's see what we're working with. So got it in line with this trailer here. I'm wondering if I should line it up because now there's not enough room to park anything in here but they might need this space to get back there you know. It won't take too long. It's got to be straight. It's got to be straight. I'm not going to sleep tonight. We all know how I get when I don't get my sleep. I 
guess that trailer's not gonna line it up with that trailer. There we go. Still not straight, but straighter. There, see, these trailers aren't straight. I'm straight. Very close, very close, good enough, whatever. I'm not moving it again. Once those trailers get pulled out, they'll line them up with this then. Then we'll all be straight. Or maybe they won't. And they'll all just always be crooked. There's that option too. Now we need one big block and a two by four underneath here. Go and do the same thing on the other side. Whoever had dropped it last, when it was still over there, had dropped it a little bit too low. And we had quite a difficult time getting my fifth wheel under the gooseneck. They didn't put this in there as well. well we're dropping it a little bit lower, or I mean higher, pardon me, than the last people did. Just so that the next person doesn't have that same pain in the butt. Okay. There we go. So we're gonna start the engine. This is a gasoline powered motor. We'll turn the fuel on, because we always turn the fuel off. Turn that on. wheel hook here. Unhook this. Okay, so we are detached from it. Now we're gonna drop the airbags on the truck. Let this rest down just a little bit. And we should be able to just leave it there. Drop the air in the truck. Now we're gonna wait for the airbags to go down a little bit. There we go. Slowly pull ourselves out. Just 
like that. And you see in the fifth wheel, won't have any problems getting underneath there the next time. Make sure we fill the bags up in the truck again. Now what's really neat about this trailer is the way we load it is this gooseneck comes right off of here. People who, uh, drivers, you guys know what I'm talking about already. I'm talking to the people right now that have never seen this before. This whole goose snack right here, it comes right off and it stays on the truck when you're hooked up. So if I was hooked up to here right now, I could detach it from here and put this right down to the ground so that you can drive machinery right up here onto the deck. So you drive it right up the front. This whole thing gets stuck onto the truck. And then when you're done loading, with that still attached to your truck, you back in here, put it in the stirrups there, lock it in place, you lift it back up off the ground, and that's how you load these trailers. Uh, today in training, we didn't load anything, but I'm sure that they will be sending me out with this shortly uh, in the next little while, or whenever they need something, right? So when that happens, I'll be able to show you guys how we load and unload these trailers. It's pretty cool. It's very different from, you know, these tin can aluminum trailers. These trailers mean business. They're heavy duty. And if you didn't uh, watch yesterday's video, you should go back and watch it. In Canada, I know that in the US you're probably looking at like, what is this? This is what we use in Canada as an over dimension, like oversized load sign. In the US, I believe you have to actually have the words oversized load on a yellow background. In Canada, those work too, but you can also use this. It's your D signs, it means danger, over dimension load. Watch out. This trailer just by itself is over dimension. It's nine feet wide. It's wider than most trailers. So you always gotta have your flags on the front corners and the back corners, even when you're empty. Oh yeah? yeah. It's been a fun day, uh, fun morning of training. I'm, I'm done all my training now. Looking forward to being sent out in 3106. That's the blue truck. This truck is 3006, that's my unit number, 3006. The blue truck is 3106. Very similar, so 30 odd six, this one, or 3006, whatever you wanna say, and 3106. And I'm looking forward to actually going out in the field to an actual customer and loading up poles and doing some crane work off the truck for an actual customer instead of just here practicing in the yard. We actually haul these pole loads all over Manitoba, way up north as well. I know we go to Thompson with them. We go on the ice roads. So I'm gonna be, there's a good chance I'll be doing ice roads this winter. I don't know for sure what they'll need me for, but I'm open to the possibility uh, because I've never done that before yet. And I'd also love the opportunity to show you, the viewers here, what real ice road trucking's all about. Forget the TV show, forget that that's Hollywood. Yeah, they, they, they have a producer, they got camera crews, they got medics on scene, helicopters going around. If anything goes wrong, help is there right away, right? In real life, you're out there on your own or maybe with one other truck. And if something goes wrong, help is hours away if you even got a cell signal where you're at. Uh, it's not as glamorous. Some days I'm sure are pretty boring because obviously for the TV show, I'm not knocking the TV show, just so you know. I'm not knocking it all. It's a great show, I love it. It's a great show. But it's a TV show. It's produced for entertainment purposes. Uh, there's all these things that always pop up. There's always some kind of drama on the show, right? Or there's a, there's a, always problems that they gotta deal with. And it's true, there are problems, but when you're out there on your own, it's a little different than when you have a big camera crew following you and a big medical heli helicopter ready to help at a moment's notice. So when I go up there, what I'm trying to say is it's going to be real ice road trucking that you can watch here. So don't forget to subscribe and stick around because we make videos almost every day here. We're in the heat of summer right now, but winter's coming and that means these ice roads are gonna be opening and you don't wanna miss seeing what it's really like up there.